piggyback fuse holders. Are they safe to use on your vehicle? I'm going to find out. Hi YouTube, my name is Jeff and today I'm going to be looking once again at the piggyback fuse holder to determine if it's safe to use. Now you may have seen my other video, how to add a fused circuit to your vehicle, in which I recommend using a piggyback fuse holder. I also state there that these things are safe, reliable and can't really be inserted in the wrong way around. Well, I've had a good number of comments and emails from folks disagreeing with me, claiming that they're not safe and that they can be inserted backwards, etc. So I thought it might be a good idea to look a little harder at this subject. After all, they could be right. So today I've built a test circuit and played with it for a few hours. And the long and short of it is, I still think these things are safe, are perfectly safe to use. They can't be inserted in the wrong way. So they're good for their purpose. Well, actually that's not true. They can be inserted the wrong way around and it can have a bit of a knock on problem, but it's not a safety issue or shouldn't be, but we'll cover that later on. If you don't like that answer, then please stay with me whilst I run through my tests and see if you can find any fault with my conclusions. As I always say, I'm no expert. So please stick with me, we'll have a look and we'll see if we can break the piggyback fuse holder. So let's begin with the test circuit itself. Here you can see all the components are stuck onto an old bit of board in my shed. Now let me try and explain things a little bit for you. You can see here at the side, on the left hand side, you can see the terminals, the positive and the negative that come from a transformer. Now this particular transformer is giving out 15 volts DC, uh, which is nice and powerful. It's a little bit more than 12 volts in your car, but it's good for this purpose. You can also see that I've got a light switch there, which I'm just using as an ordinary switch. Now there's also a couple of bulbs there. Now they're halogen bulbs. One of the criticisms I did receive from folks was that using LEDs they don't draw very much current so my other video might not have been very accurate. So this time I'm using 50 watt halogen bulbs. Now these things do draw plenty of current. We are going to see a few amps in this circuit so that won't be a problem this time. You'll also see here there's the fuse holder. Now this fuse holder has been made by myself. Now, obviously it's not a shop board thing, it's just a couple of spade connectors I think, but it does the job nicely. So first things first, what do we use a piggyback fuse holder for? Well we use it when we have an existing circuit and we want to add another fused circuit. So let's look at the bottom part of this board at the moment, let's concentrate on that and we'll consider this section to be the original existing circuit that's already in the vehicle. It could be anything, I don't know, let's say it's the headlight. Now, now you can see that circuit, you can see the positive and the negative from the battery. You can see the switch, which you know could be on your dashboard and it's running through the fuse, running through the lamp and going back to the negative terminal. So it's an existing circuit. You can see how that would run. The problem is on my particular setup in the background there, the colors are a little different. So if we add the colors there, you can see what I've done. So this original circuit, it's the positive comes in as a blue cable and it goes out as a green. So think of the green cable as the earth. And by the earth, I mean the negative, the chassis of the vehicle itself. Obviously this existing circuit already has a fuse. It's got a green fuse. It doesn't matter about the color, but this one, it's a green fuse in this particular original circuit. So if we're going to add a second circuit now, we're going to add another bulb and this is going to be our new additional circuit. And of course, it's going to be fairly obvious where the negative connection is going to go. That's nice and easy. That's just going to go to the chassis of the vehicle. But what about the positive? How are we going to connect the positive to the fuse holder? We shouldn't branch off an existing fuse. That'd be very naughty. We'd bring a little extra strain on that fuse. We could blow it. So of course, we're going to bring in the piggyback fuse holder, which is the whole point behind this video. So there you go, there's our piggyback in the fuse holder itself. The original fuse is still green and this new additional circuit has got a red fuse. It's got a red fuse to match the color of the tail from the piggy. 
it's not necessary it's just for convenience on this video and again with convenience in mind let's give each circuit a name let's call the original circuit the green zone to match the color of the fuse and in that same vein let's call the new circuit the red zone again to match the color of the fuse now the whole point of all this is that both circuits should work independently of one another they should work through separate fuses so let's just gray out all the wiring for a moment and let's look at that so let's look at the green zone now we can see how the power would come from the positive it would come along to the fuse it would pass through the green fuse it would then pass down that blue wire through the lamp through the green cable into the chassis of the vehicle completing the circuit so we can easily see how the green zone works so let's have a look at the red zone so again the power comes from the battery this time it doesn't pass through the green fuse it passes through its own separate red fuse it continues down the red tail of the piggy all the way to the the lamp where it lights the lamp then passes through the green cable into the chassis completing the circuit so we can see an independent red zone circuit and that's all the boring theory out the way so let's move on to the actual practice let's run a video and see this all in action so let's start off with both fuses in the piggyback holder and the piggyback in what i consider to be the correct way around we hit the switch and both lamps light which is exactly what we'd expect to see but what happens if we swap it the other way around so let's have a go piggybacks in the wrong way around Flip the switch and both lamps still light proving the point that it does work but are they acting independently you might ask let's do a little more testing and see here we have the green fuse only and it's in the correct way around so this is the original circuit and the original circuit still works the new circuit doesn't work it's got no fuse in it so that's working no problem at all Let's flip the fuse holder the wrong way around. Still only on one fuse, the original green fuse. And let's have a look. Yes, the original circuit still works. The new existence, the new circuit rather, doesn't work. It's got no fuse. It won't. So let's repeat that test, this time just with the red. So we put the red fuse in. And of course, the red fuse is there just to match the color of the picky for convenience. We put that in the correct way around. And we hit the switch and what happens the top lamp the new circuit lights the original existing circuit doesn't light it hasn't got a fuse in the holder so it won't light but what happens if we flip that the wrong way around let's put the piggy in with the red fuse the other way around let's see what happens so there we are piggy in the wrong way around hit the switch Oh, nothing happens. Nothing's happened at all. No light whatsoever. Were you expecting that? I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting that at all. So what's actually happened here? Well, the original fuse is missing. The original existing fuse, the green fuse, that's not there. And the pig holder is in the wrong way around. Even though that red fuse is still working fine, the circuit doesn't fire the current doesn't flow. So there is a potential problem there. So if the pig holder is actually inserted the incorrect way and the original fuse blows, then there's gonna be no power to the piggy fuse holder at all. So actually there is a flaw worth noting there. So there you go, all you skeptics out there that heckled me and said you're wrong. I am wrong in that regard. So if the original fuse blows there and the pig is in the wrong way round, there could be a potential problem. So that's something to look out for. But let's carry on with a little more testing. I think by this point, I've managed to show that other than in the last situation, where there was a case of a blown fuse, that the piggyback holder works well and that the circuits do operate independently, just like they should. But this doesn't address all the issues that have been raised. Some folks have claimed to me that one fuse draws more current than the other, that there's an imbalance of the power distribution, and that this could have safety implications. 
the original fuse, for example, could blow as a consequence of this. So to test this, well, I've pretty much run all these tests again, except for the second time I incorporated my ammeter into the circuit to measure what was going on. So let's move on to those videos and see what happens. So let's begin with everything in its proper position, the piggy fitted correctly, both fuses in place, and let's measure the current just in the new circuit for the moment. So there we are, that's our setup. Click the switch, and we can see we're getting a reading of 3.6 amps. That's 3.6 amps just in the new circuit. Both circuits working, piggy in the correct way. Let's measure the current now in the bottom circuit, in the original circuit. So we're not changing anything other than the position of the ammeter. Click the switch and sure enough, we're getting 3.6 amps in the bottom circuit as well. So we're getting the same current being used in both the top and the bottom circuits, in both the, the new and the old, which is exactly what we would expect. There's no difference. Now let's see what happens if we put the piggy in the wrong way around. Does that affect the current? So coming back to the top circuit, the new circuit, with a piggy in the wrong way around, let's measure the current, and sure enough, 3.6 amps. There's no difference, even with the piggy the wrong way around, but with both fuses in place, both circuits working, we're still getting 3.6 amps in the top circuit. Let's see what happens in the original circuit. There's the ammeter in place, click the switch, 3.6 amps so there we go all four of those tests with the fuses in place piggy in the right way piggy in the wrong way i'm getting 3.6 amps in both circuits i can't see a difference so let's just put one fuse in the piggy at a time now and we'll put it in the correct way around the piggies in the right way only got one fuse and we'll start off with the original green one and we only want to measure the current in the green circuit because that's the only circuit that's going to be working here. So let's put it in, turn on the switch. And this time actually we're getting a little bit more than 3.6, we're getting just about four amps there. So we're actually getting a bit more, there's a bit of an increase. Now why is that? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, perhaps there's a fault uh, with the meter. Um, perhaps the, there's less resistance being drawn, I'm not sure. I think the best thing to do at this point is to run a supplementary test. So let's take the piggy out altogether and measure the circuit just with the fuse and the fuse holder. So there we go. No piggy at all, but just the green fuse. And click the switch, four amps. So there's no difference either with or without the piggy holder. We are just getting four amps. If we just stick to the one single circuit, probably a transformer issue. So let's flip the piggy the wrong way around and see what happens. Does that make a difference? No, we're still getting four amps. So just the one fuse, the original green fuse and the original green circuit, and we're just measuring four amps, exactly the same as before. No difference. Let's turn our attention now to the red circuit, to the new circuit. We'll put the piggy holder in the correct way and we'll just fit the red fuse and measure the current in the new circuit. Only one light fires, because there's only the one circuit being powered, and we're getting four amps again. So it's just a, a one light issue, I think, with the transformer that. But it's four amps exactly the same as it was in the last two scenarios. Now, of course, what's going to happen if we flip the piggy the wrong way around? Let's have a look and see. There we are, piggy's upside down, just the one fuse click and of course nothing happens because we know when there's no original fuse the piggy doesn't work if it's in backwards so obviously there's going to be no current and i think folks that's it i can't really think of any more tests to run on the piggyback to be honest and um, as far as i'm concerned i've done quite a lot of tests on this now i was sort of people were concerned that i wasn't putting enough current into the circuit and i think four amps is a good dose of current so i don't think that's an issue and i've certainly shown as far as i can see that both the circuits work independently um, one does not feed the other both fuses act independently do not they do not tap off one another at all and i can certainly measure no difference in power consumption 
between the circuits. So I don't believe that one circuit is taking more power than another. And I can only conclude that the PE back holder is safe for use and that it does exactly what it says it does. For the most part, if it's fitted correctly, it will function correctly, no problem at all. Obviously, there's that issue of if we fit it wrongly and we get a blown circuit on the original fuse, then yes, it's not going to work. We're going to have a problem there. But as long as it's fitted correctly, it will work. So I think we're on to a winner with these, personally. I will just add, of course, that all of my findings are only related to the piggy holder that I've got. I can't claim that all piggy holders are going to be the same. Perhaps there's a manufacturer out there that's making some really cheap, nasty ones and that they work differently. I can't speak for them all, but if they all function the same way as this one, then there isn't an issue with them at all. So again, as long as it's fitted correctly, it won't be a problem. And if you're not 100% sure how to fit it correctly, then do check out my original video on the subject. So that, my friends, I think is that. If you enjoyed this video, how about a thumbs up? Please like it. It's, it's always nice to get a bit of appreciation. I'd be very grateful if you could like, comment or subscribe. Subscriptions make a big difference. It's nice to know there's people out there watching my videos. And talking of watching my videos, why not look out for some of my others? I've got a lot of videos out there at the moment. The best part of 40 videos, I think, now. And I'm getting some really nice, generous comments back. So please do check out my videos and let me know what you think. If there's any subject you'd like me to cover in a future video, again, drop me a line. I'll be happy to look at it. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.